Right, finding lowest common denominators uh, of the rational expression. Now, let's go back to some um, fraction days. If you have, I don't know, say, one third, and you've got one fifth, all right? The lowest common denominator is going to be 15, okay? And really, the shortcut for that is, I've just done three times five. It doesn't always like that. The lowest common denominator is not always just you multiply the two numbers together. The lowest common denominator of nine and six is 18, you know, not 54. But you can do that if you want to, okay? Multiply those two things together. And that's really the trick for doing these rational expression ones. So I shall just erase this. Okay, so right now I have a t. And I've got a t minus 8. Those are my two denominators. All I can really do is put them together. And that now is my new lowest common denominator. And that's it for that. That's, that's pretty much it. That's it. That, you just put the two together. End of question. Next one, however. Right. Let's erase this. Okay, so for this one, right, I have a 3 and an A, that's right here, okay, and then in the next one, now this is where you have to start doing some factoring to see what it's made up of. Uh, if you go back to the old uh, prime factorization days of 030 where you had to factorize, to do the prime factors of all these numbers and then build them back together again to make the lowest common multiple, this is what you're doing here. So if I factor this, I can only factor an A out, okay? And what's left is an A plus 6, okay? So again, the lowest common denominator, you just put all these together. So I've got a 3. Now, I've got an A. Now, I'm not putting um, 2 there, because 2 of them would be A squared. I don't see an A squared there. I'm only going to pick one. There's an A in each one, so A is the most I've got. So I've got a 3, I've got an A in each one, but I can only pick one A, okay? I'm not going to write a, a two A's, which makes A squared, because there isn't an A squared. So I'll just pick one of them, it doesn't matter which one, and also there's an A plus 6 that I can see, okay? So that there is the answer. That's the lowest common denominator right there, okay? Now, if you keep thinking, OK, you look at these denominators for question three, again, you've got to factor them to see what they're made up of and then build them back together again in some ways. So um, let's have a look. Uh, we're still doing that. OK. Right. Let's have a look at this one. This is x squared plus 3x plus 2. Right. x squared plus 3x plus 2 will factor into x plus 2. with an x plus 1. Okay, remember the little trick? What's two numbers that make two when you multiply, that make three when you add? Two and one. Okay, that's that one done. Okay, that's the denominator. How about this one? What's this one made up of? Right. It's made up of, right, what's two numbers that make negative six when you multiply, negative five when you add? x minus six, x plus one. Okay. Now you'll see a lot of this. In other words, they always tend to have a repeating parenthesis. This one's got an x plus 1 in both, but remember, I'm only going to write 1. It's not as if it's x plus 1 squared. So I have an x plus 2. I have an x plus 1. And I'm only going to write one of them. There's only one in either one of them. But I can also see an x minus 6. And that there is the lowest common denominator. I just piece them together. That's it.